using Matilda as a target. I'm going to look at comparing the different attack types in the Burp Intruder. Start with, we're going to go to the Matilda login page and put in a request that we can capture. Just put in a username and password. Go to the proxy, make sure it's on. Log in. So we've captured the request for our login as the username we picked in the username field and the password in the password field. We're going to right click and say send to intruder. And we'll go ahead and turn the intercept off. So in the intruder, we're going to look at the request a little closer. Right now, the intruder is targeting the page the session ID, username, password, and the login button. We're going to clear these and we're only going to target the username and the password. First type of attack we're going to look at is the sniper. The way this works is it takes the word list you feed to it and it tries each of those in field number one and then holding field number one constant, in this case with uname, it tries each of the word list in field number two. So we'll go ahead and try this for the payload. We can add words here one by one, but instead we're going to load from a file. We have a test file, and we're going to try the username's test file. So it's loaded up several names. So again, go ahead and launch this. And we'll notice that in field number one, it tries each of the names in turn. And for password, it's going to pass the default. So if we look at the request, we can see admin, password, administrator, password, Jeremy, password, and so on and so forth. And then it's going to turn around and holding field number one constant, it's going to pass in admin for password, administrator for password, and so on. And it doesn't look like this attack worked very well in this case, but it is useful in certain circumstances. For example, if you thought that users were using the word password as their password, then just iterate through all the usernames you gathered and see if you get a hit. The way the battering ram works is similar, but it tries the words in all the fields at the same time. So it'll try username and password field with the same word at the same time. Go ahead and start the attack. So in both of these cases, the number of tries is going to be relatively low. If we look at the request, we can see that admin, admin was tried, then it'll be administrator, administrator, and so on. This is pretty useful when you believe that the user is using the same username and password. And a lot of times this will get a hit. So for the third type of attack, try the pitchfork. This requires a second word list. So for word list number two, we're going to load a password example word list that we have stored from fuzzdb. So word list number one is the usernames, and word list number two is the passwords. And in the positions, it's going to try user list one here and user list two here, and it's going to line them up. So in other words, password is the first word in the second word list. Admin is the first word in the first word list. It's going to try admin password, then administrator, and then the second word off the password list, and so on. So we can start that attack, and it's probably not going to work very well because in this case, it's trying only the fields that line up. It's not good coverage. But it's useful in several situations. And then finally we have the cluster bomb which takes word list number one and tries every combination of word list number one with every combination of word list number two. But obviously this is going to result in a lot of requests and it's going to take the longest amount of time. The other three were basically linear time and this one's going to be uh, more of a n squared time. But it's probably going to have good results. As we can see, we've already had success. Jeremy has the password of password, and so does the Simba username. So using the four different kinds of modes of the intruder, we can get different automated results.